Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here. And here I have Samsung's Beast, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. In this video, I'd like to pit it against Apple's iPhone 11 Pro Max and see just how capable the new S20 Ultra is with the Snapdragon 865 chip. Of course, this thing is rocking 12 gigabytes of RAM compared to Apple's paltry four gigabytes on the 11 Pro Max. And in a variety of tests, such as app launching, of course, synchronized, we're gonna time them, RAM management, general benchmarks, even biometrics, and heat and thermals. Let's see what Samsung is cooking with the S20 Ultra. I love the, the design of this thing, it's so beastly. It's all flex. All right, let's get to testing. And by the way, I'm giving away three Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultras. If you wanna win one of those, down below in the description. All right, let's get into the testing. Now the Galaxy S20 Ultra has the higher clock speed here, octa-core processor, and 12 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. The iPhone is still on DDR4X, so the S20 Ultra has more RAM and a higher clock speed RAM too. Both are on the seven nanometer plus architecture. Now I'll be running this test in the 120 hertz screen mode on the S20 Ultra. After consulting Max Weinbeck, he said the differences would be negligible, but let's go ahead and start with our customary synchronized speed test. So I added four extra applications in light of the larger display here and more RAM on the S20 Ultra. And we'll just be going through those real quick. And the image I'm loading here, this is a massive space photo thought it was fitting for the space zoom and we're going to be exporting that in 100 quality and then launching some games and both are still neck and neck at this point point. and a disclaimer i say in every video not all of these games and applications have been updated to support the s20 ultra so do consider that the snapdragon 865 is not new but not all of these games have been optimized for the display in fact asphalt 9 i had to sideload from a different source because it's not in the play store but overall, it, everything worked properly, no issues there. The iPhone surges ahead with just one application, S20 Ultra right behind it on its coattails. But I'm pretty surprised, just in general usage, the S20 Ultra is so fluid, all of the animations are sharp, pretty much what I expect from Samsung. And with that display, the 120 hertz, oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how amazing it is to use it. And unfortunately, you can't use that in the Quad HD mode, but there will be a software update to enable that fairly soon here, says Max Weinbach. So at this point, still neck and neck, even halfway through the test on Temple Run, already jumping into Oceanhorn, and then we're gonna be doing some entertainment, media apps, and repeating the cycle. Now we'll be testing some network-based apps too, Hulu, Amazon, Netflix, Spotify. Both of these phones do support Wi-Fi 6, and I do have a compatible router, so it's both a test of connectivity and app launching. And I wish I could do a 5G speed test in this too. Now the iPhone does not have a 120 hertz display. And in just this test, I could tell, you know, things aren't as smooth, but Apple does a really good job with their animations. They give an illusion of the phone being much more fluid than it actually is, but just the S20 Ultra. I never thought that the Samsungs would become more fluid than Apple's. I mean, well done here. Can't wait until this year's iPhone. As we wrap up round one, I like to end this test with a video export. I'll be importing 4K video for an export in 1080p. So 4K 60 to 1080 60. I wanted to do 8K, but there are no video applications besides the standard one on Android that do support that format. And unfortunately it wouldn't be a fair test. So the same video, 4K 60 on both exporting to the camera roll. And this is one area the iPhone has always had a leading position in. I don't know if it's the way that the chip is built, but the export times for video have always been so much quicker. With the iPhone in the lead, it's finishing the video export test and finishes round one with a time of three minutes and six seconds. And we jump into round two where you can already tell that all of the applications have been dumped. The entire app cache is just refreshed in order to make room for that very speedy video export. Meanwhile, the S20 Ultra is exactly where it left off on pretty much every application so far, especially the games. The iPhone just dumps those. There's no need to keep those running in the background. It doesn't have the resources, the capacity. Meanwhile, the Galaxy S20 Ultra is just flexing on the iPhone. It just exported 4K 60 and kept player unknowns in the background. Asphalt 9 preloaded in the background. It's just crazy how much resources this phone has. 
So if you do a lot of back-to-back -back app multitasking, jump into one big application, go into another, the Galaxy S20 Ultra is definitely dominating here on that end. It's amazing to see when a smartphone beats out Apple completely. When the iPhone 11 Pro originally launched, there was a bug where apps wouldn't stay open in the background more than usual. Like you would go from YouTube to your messaging application, then go back to YouTube and it would be completely flushed. Apple fixed that, but you can't fix or download more RAM onto your phone. I mean, the problem still persists, and I think it stems from the fact that it only has four gigabytes of RAM on a flagship in 2020. We definitely need more. So the Galaxy S20 Ultra finishes round two with a speedy one minute and five seconds. Meanwhile, the iPhone is still loading games and only halfway through the tests. This is a testament right here why the iPhone needs more RAM, but don't let this test fool you. If you're not a power user, if you don't use a million applications at once, it's fine. You don't really need that much RAM. In regular daily usage, social media, texting, YouTube, Reddit, you do have an adequate amount of RAM switching between applications. It's not a big issue. So anyways, we're finishing up round two. Yeah, it's kind of amazing that every single application got flushed on the iPhone. And we finished round two with a time of two minutes and four seconds. Not so bad, you know, going through all those applications, the iPhone only had a minute extra time here. Still a formidable effort by the iPhone. And wow, what a finale. The iPhone 11 Pro Max takes the crown here, round one. Round two obviously had to reload everything. It flushed the entire app switcher cache. The Galaxy S20 Ultra with its 12 gigabytes of RAM was superior there. And it really shows you why Apple needs to add more RAM on the iPhone. Apparently it's going to six gigabytes for 2020. But okay, so let's do some startup tests here. Android 10 versus Apple's iOS. And kind of interesting is that they changed the power down sequence. So it's volume down plus power. You have to hold those and only then does the power down menu activate. So little sequence like Apple's, they don't like you to shut down your phone. And throughout the test, I'm quite surprised with both phones and their thermal management, you know, cool to the touch, maybe a little bit warm, but overall did handle the stress test without a problem. The iPhone too. Again, this one is swapped, but I doubt that makes a big difference. Anyways, here we go in uh, three, two, one. So starting these up at the same time. I wish I was in an area to try that. I think the closest is Spokane or uh, Los Angeles down south, but we'll test cellular regardless. The iPhone does start up here first on iOS 13. The S20 Ultra not far behind. Okay, so with the apps cleared here. Let's just launch some, get a general bearing for speed on both devices. About the same, one, two. About the same camera, one, two. Taking a picture, we'll activate the night mode here in Photoshop Express, one, two. And the photo here is huge. I thought it was fitting for a space zoom to load one of the largest photos of space, one, two. So both pretty fast. It's gotten to a point where it really doesn't matter which phone is faster. They both keep up, both great. You know, obviously different operating systems, but they hold their own too. I pretty much care that my apps just load like this and they do on both. Hulu one, two, pretty much the same. There's some give and take here, but both are fast in their own regard. In Safari, let's load a few sites here. One, two. Apple, of course, has to load faster on the iPhone. And Samsung.com, one, two. The iPhone loaded that one faster too. And browser compatibility on the S20 Ultra is superior in the HTML5 test and my website one, two. And Geekbench. So I've already run a test here and the numbers are slightly lower. So this is Geekbench 5. The values do shift, do consider that. The uh, Apple A13, even though these are both on seven nanometer plus architecture, the iPhone does take the crown here in a single core score, but multi-core score here, the Galaxy S20 Ultra is catching up fast with the Snapdragon 865. Can't wait to see the Plus variant, and I can't wait to see the Apple A14 from Apple. That's gonna be mental. And here's the Antutu benchmark, Galaxy S20 Ultra scoring the higher marks here. The cooling got a bit scorching on the S20 Ultra halfway through, so it reached around 104, 105 degrees. The iPhone 11 Pro Max in this housing swap was a little bit cooler. It ran under 100 degrees. So I'd say better thermal dissipation on the iPhone. And speed test. So I wanna run this knowing fully well that it's capable of 5G. I'm not in an area for it, unfortunately, but we will be testing the Wi-Fi 6 capabilities. I do have the new Amplify Alien router. It's pretty much the same speeds over Wi-Fi 6 from the same distance from the router. So in my spotty area, the iPhone 11 Pro Max actually had better download and upload speeds. I don't know why that is. And just for you, Max Weinbeck, I ran a 3D Mark test on the Slingshot Extreme. 
Those are the numbers I got. And biometrics. Let's test Apple's Face ID versus Samsung's Face Unlock. Of course, the Samsung has the added benefit of an in-screen fingerprint sensor by Qualcomm. Okay, one, two. The Face Unlock is much faster on the iPhone. Yeah and it's safer. It's actually using 3D depth data. The Samsung takes a minute to actually even register your face, but it has the in-screen ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, which is instant. No animation, straight into your content. The hardware disappears here. Samsung's done a marvelous job. And as you can see, much faster than Apple's face unlock system. You can definitely see why Apple is trying to reintroduce Touch ID onto the iPhone. It's so much faster and not replacing Face ID, but adjacent to it. One thing I did notice about the S20 Ultra is it doesn't always register your fingerprint on the first time. Sometimes it takes several scans and I just got locked out. So hopefully with some software, they can adjust that, but it's so much faster than Face ID Unlock. No animation, Qualcomm's latest sensor, just straight into the phone. And some closing thoughts, the S20 Ultra is ultra. It actually lives up to Samsung's branding. This thing is beastly. The 12 gigabytes of RAM really shows. The price tag obviously is more expensive here, but you're getting the absolute best Android has to offer on the Galaxy S20 Ultra. So let me know your thoughts down below. This was a very interesting test. Well done, Samsung. And don't forget, I'm giving away three of these. If you want a chance to win, links down below and AirPods Pro giveaways concluding here shortly. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.